where everything is mass produced and manufactured. What they do at Cottage Farms is still truly rare. And they bring us, again, this is the look yes. of an exotic Caribbean island that will grow almost anywhere in the country. I love the size of the foliage. It's, it's a great texture and I use these for my clients also because it it provides structure, texture, because most flower borders are kind of soft and fluffy okay. and they're beautiful, but you've got to have something that is, it's, it's very disciplined in its structure, but it's still got that nice personality to it. I planted mine with sun patients last year, but if you picked up the Agastache, mm -hmm. gorgeous with that because it's very similar colors. These are tender though, and I dig my roots up in the fall and I save those okay. um, and, and bring them in. I store them in the basement in an in a onion sack. Oh, because this, for most areas of the country, this would be considered, as you said, an annual. An annual, although. But it, it, it's, it's not quite a bulb. It's, it, a root. it's a root. Okay. It's so a root. You bring them back in, uh, save them, plant just them the again roots, next year. The just the Just the roots. And, and look at the size here. And this is a little bit different. The actual pronunciation here is Canova? Canova. Canova. Canas. Okay. Canas. So you know canna lilies, but what I love about these is that they're these tropical fruit colors. And the cannas that I grew up with, there was a hard orangish red. Okay. And there was a, a, a hard yellow one. And to, to me, they were just harsh looking. And they were coarse and they're a little bit tall. These blooms are larger, they're denser, and there's that beautiful red shades right there because it's, it's not that uh, fire engine red. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's that tropical red, which is really beautiful. Uh, I just love, it's got a lot of velvet colors to it and the blooms themselves are soft. But mine I had with my son patients last year and mine got chest high and just gorgeous foliage. And there's a perfect yellow one right there because it's a nice uh, buttery color. It's not that hard mm -hmm. school bus yellow. And then the mango color is exactly that. Just absolutely love these. Butterflies, hummingbirds are crazy about these and they work down in Mississippi really well. And guess where we are? If you plant these in multiples, you can get a look like that. That's at the gateway going into, into Canada. Oh, I didn't realize into that. Into Canada, out in full baking sun. And if you wanna see what they look like in Westchester, Pennsylvania, yep, that's I know that my place. backyard. Yep. I've got a little back porch right there. You see, I've got my sun patients there. Mm -hmm. and I've got the cannas in the back, but you can see the foliage and how they add the structure. And look at that sun patients at the base and the cannas sticking up above it. Just a, it's an absolute oasis. It makes me so happy. And I, and I want to point out, although this gentleman is truly an expert, his garden is one of the easiest to maintain. It is. You'll work less hard and you'll get beautiful, beautiful results. It all starts with the quality of the plant that you're going to receive. You're going to get three of them. You get all three of those different, if you will, flavors. Yes. You get the yellow, that gorgeous tropical red, and then also that peach. But I mean, these are sturdy plants and that foliage, is gorgeous. That's a tropical island. And they will bloom their heads off this year. If you've got an area that is, say, it's really wet okay. and things rot, yep. you can plant the cannas there and they're absolutely happy. In fact, you can plant, if you've got a goldfish pond, <coughs> excuse me, you can put the pots directly in the pond. Okay. They will grow in a pond. Perfect. But, also in, but they don't require that. They can also grow in a regular perennial border, which is what you saw that I, that I had there. Um, but a great, great look. I use them for my clients because I use them as exclamation points in the border. I'll put them about six feet apart and I got all my fluff in between. Okay. Then you've got these sentinels of color that give structure. Uh, for those of you, if you're just getting started on a passion of gardening, it's America's number one hobby, by the way, get to know Philip Watson. Uh, we're not allowed to give out his client list, but those, those people here <laughs> on the, squealing, in the, uh, yeah, in, in the upper <laughs> in near East Coast, uh, some of America's wealthiest individuals, people whose names you would recognize, hire Philip to come out and to plan out these gardens and to put them in so that their homes, and they are very competitive with one another. Well, they are, and also they tend to get in magazines. Okay. And so I've got to put things in their gardens that are uh, friendly to the camera. Mm -hmm. And that's how I design my gardens. And you've got to have structure. Uh, sometimes I do these directly in the borders, as I mentioned earlier, okay. but they're amazing and really large pots. And you can plant all three colors in one really big cot pot if you want to just to make a huge statement well, just imagine okay. Let, we'll pull these together and imagine you've got a big big pot 
and all of these are in one large container. Okay. Pick up a couple of collections, and then you've got that going on like that. Just a great look, particularly around a pool where you want it to look really tropical. Mm -hmm. So there's a great tropical look. And if we can just take one glance back here. Yes, that'll be coming up. I've got this coming up <laughs> later. So if you want the entire tropics in your garden, wherever you are in the United States, these are the two things that, that'll do it for you. And that tree is a braided tree. It's unlike anything else. And this is what cottage farms and what Philip do so very, very well. This is usually a plant that is considered an annual and you would buy it again next year. These, you can pull that root after the fall, save it, put it in cool but not you know cold temperatures. So you say like the basement. In the basement. I and, put them in an onion sack and I hang it on a nail that, from the rafter. And, and then it's next, right next year they come back again, plant yes. them again. That's different, plus so are these colors. These colors are a little softer, a little true uh, to tropical as opposed to just harsh desert-like colors. Precisely, but the beautiful colors, that, that beautiful red, that perfect yellow right there, um, great for accenting the border. All, also in containers on your deck area, if you've got a small garden and you want some drama, this is a great way to get it. And then of course that beautiful mango, these get 30 to 48 inches tall. More blooms all season, beautiful leaf, leaf structure, a great, great companion for sun patients for those of you who picked them up. That's in Canada. That's the Canadian border. That's, That's good. the Canadian border, but what a handsome look that is. And right here, my little garden, my little concrete pad in the back, I dressed it up so it looks fancy and it really That's isn't. gorgeous. I don't have a fancy house, but I sure got a fancy <laughs> garden. <laughs> Coming so. up a little bit later on, and this is what Philip was referencing, these are the Tutti Frutti Hibiscus patio trees. It's actually four different plants that have been braided together. What you'll receive at $58.50 is actually a plant that is two plus years old. It takes that long to go ahead and, and work with them and train them. Highly recommend that you consider picking up more than one. They frame each other beautifully like bookends and they are as tropical as tropical can be.